New Jersey. Goes by the name of CDB, Carolyn Doran Ballard. Hello. How you doing? I'm doing great, thank you. How about yourself? I, you know, you I'm look good. fabulous in my favorite color, which I, is red, I, I, by the way. I, I fabulous. Wore this just for you. I think you did. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, it brings it out in your eyes. It does it. Okay. Wait a minute. Let me, the red. Let me, yes. let, let me stop. I've been known to. I've been known to have a little let, devil let, in me. Let me stop because Dell's going to shoot me. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. <laughs> now, you are originally from New Jersey. I am. Yes, Linda, New Jersey. Absolutely. Let me ask you a question. When you started bowling, mm -hmm. how old were you? I was seven years old when I started bowling. Mm -hmm. And I started at Jersey Lanes in the youth program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of a unique little story. My father would take my sister and I down to the bowling center and he'd go have coffee sitting at the snack shop like everyone did. Mm -hmm. And uh, my sister and I would watch the kids bowl. And then one uh, week we said to him, hey, we want to join the junior league you know we want to be down here and my dad said okay we'll wait for the next session to start but before that um, i'm going to teach you the four-step delivery and bowling etiquette mm -hmm. so my uh, sister and i actually learned the four-step delivery on the back of the concourse he would every time we were at the bowling center he would teach us what to do mm -hmm. and then he taught us bowling etiquette how to pick the ball up Person on the left goes, person on the right goes, then it's your turn. So it's kind of a, a cool little background to how we got started. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's how we did. And then the rest is history. So you're dead. Mm -hmm. And he was a military hero. He was. World okay. War II. We, we love the fact. We respect the service yep. to Thank the country. You. Yes. Did you get your personality, your aggressive, silent killer personality from your dad? Absolutely 100% not. <laughs> really? <laughs> no. My dad was the soft-spoken, mm -hmm. you can always come home, you know, it was all about his girls. Daddy's girls. My personality is definitely my mother. Uh-oh. And, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. she's, she's an Irish woman mm -hmm. with red hair, so mm -hmm. that speaks volumes. Right. Uh, no, my dad was very soft-spoken, liked to be in the background. Um, I, think, I think the part of the personality that I got from him was more about, um, I have probably a smaller group of friends than like my sister had, mm -hmm. and I kept them close. Uh, you kind of always knew where I was. I had my certain spots, right. and then I'd be home. Uh, but my mom, the, the actual outgoing personality, running for mayor everywhere I go, striking up a conversation, definitely is all my mother. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you mentioned your sister, Kathy. Yes. Did you go at it? Yeah. No, we definitely were competitive. That mm -hmm. is for sure. She was really more athletic than I was. She was great. She was a softball pitcher. Um, she just was very athletic. Mm -hmm. I played tennis until I was in high school, and then I had to choose whether I was going to play tennis or bowl because they overlapped at that time, mm -hmm. and I chose bowling. Um, but I, again, athletics was always in our family. She definitely was more of the could just pick something up and be very good at it. Right. I felt like at times I had to work maybe a little harder. I wasn't as athletic. Mm -hmm. um, but as we progressed and went to college, obviously we both just fell in love with bowling and that's where we were. At, at that point, mm -hmm. when you went to high school, mm -hmm. did you compete against the boys? I did. Actually, our high school team was a, a mix of boys and girls. We didn't have, um, you know, a women's team and a men's team. We had a varsity and a JV, and I was on the varsity team mm -hmm. um, with some of the, the guy bowlers, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but and, and I think that's what helped definitely it definitely brought out a little more of your killer instinct because you were always tired of hearing about how they were always so good and you were so just part of the team. So they trash talked you? Not, not so much. They definitely didn't trash talk me. Oh, but did you trash I think talk it was, them? No, I think it was the culture mm -hmm. that you just weren't as good. Right. They were the better bowlers. Right. And I didn't like that because, uh, as you were talking about my mother, mm -hmm. my mother was very outspoken and very politically active in our, our city. So she was always fighting 
for the betterment of the community and mm -hmm. especially for women. So I think that's where I got it was like, I don't want them to continue to have the stereotype. So I felt like I, w I was out to prove something. Oh, you were definitely out to prove something. Yeah. You know, as your career developed mm -hmm. after college, mm -hmm. and we're gonna go to that in a second, because you met your husband in college. I did. Well, I, I did meet my husband in college. He owned mm -hmm. the pro shop where we uh, drilled our bowling balls for mm -hmm. West Texas State, now mm -hmm. West Texas A&M. And uh, yeah, I did. I got to meet him, and it's it's kind of a just quick funny story. I he, I was friends with the pro shop operator who was friends with Dell, traveled with him on tour. Mm -hmm. He says, I want you to meet my friend. I'm like, okay. And he says, his name's Dell Ballard. And I'm like, oh, okay. You know, like, okay. You know, who is he? I mean, like, I knew him, but, mm -hmm. eh. And uh, the, the night I met him, he had just won the uh, tournament in Grand Prairie. Okay. Down at, it's the Quaker State, it's mm -hmm. a big one. And we were there at the bowling center, and he says, hey, I'm Del Ballard. I'm like, oh, hi, nice to meet you, or whatever. And he had this check in his pocket, because when they got done bowling, they got paid. Right. But it was a check, right. and it was for $35,000. And I'm like, oh, okay, congratulations. And he goes, I just won the tournament. And I'm like, oh, good, good for you. Like, I didn't, he was like, okay. I wasn't impressed. I don't know. I don't so know what you to say just, about that. So you were just matter of fact. No, it, I was a little bit because I was in college. Like, I just wanted to hang out with my friends and have a good time and drink a couple beers. And we mm -hmm. were at the bowl, you know, having a good time. Mm -hmm. But it's so funny because from that night, we remained good friends. And it wasn't until years later we started to date. He, we were always good friends. It was uh -huh. the weirdest thing. Yeah. And you're still friends. We are. He, I say this about Dell. He's the guy that I can go out with at night. We can sit at one of our favorite bars, mm -hmm. listen to good music, mm -hmm. and we could talk about anything. So, See, this yeah. is, this it's is what I'm cool. saying. You yeah. know, so we can all aspire to no, that type of relationship. Yeah, but don't get me wrong. There are moments. I just want to. Oh, there's always going to be moments. I slap him on the side of the head. That's what and life I'm is. I'm sure he wants to slap me. Oh, but, so oh, but you I know just want to go out on. He's he's winning right that. now because he's you winning. slapped him the he's side winning. of the head. You didn't hit him with a cast iron skillet. I'm still around. <laughs> <laughs> You're still around. That's a, that's a beautiful I'm still thing. Still around. <laughs> so now after that, yeah. Okay. Yeah. How much of an influence did Dell have on your career after oh, college? A big influence. I mm -hmm. went out on college. I wasn't very. I went out on tour after college. I wasn't very good. Um, I was very raw. I just, I think I had good fundamentals, mm -hmm. and I think that's always been one of my strong suits. Mm -hmm. um, but when I met him and decided to get very serious about my bowling, and this is what I want to do, I've got to commit to it. Um, let's just say it was a lot of hard love mm -hmm. and a lot of hard conversations to truly teach me how to get to the next level and how to approach the game. Mm -hmm. And probably one of the best piece of, pieces of advice is um, when you're competing, you can't win the tournament on Sunday during practice session. Mm -hmm. it's, it's every day is a new day, it's practice session. Then there's a game plan for Monday, which is qualifying. Mm -hmm. Then there's a game plan for Tuesday, which is qualifying. Then there's a game plan for match play. Then there's a game, every day is new. Mm -hmm. You can't, you know, what you did yesterday may not work the next day. And he really taught me how to approach an event and pace yourself to be able to truly put yourself in position to make that TV show and then win. Okay, this, we're gonna go back to your tour life. Okay. Okay, and, and I'm gonna read <laughs> okay, this because- Okay, does this have to be th clean? There was a lot okay, going on. A lot going on, okay, lots you, going on. You've got 20 titles. Yes. Three majors. Mm -hmm. You you have a USBC Queens title. Mm -hmm. The first woman to throw a 300 in a USBC Master, correct? In the, in a PBA in, regional. In a, in a PBA, in a PBA yeah, I, the, I the did. first yep, woman. Yep, yep. Yeah, don't know. I, yeah, I forgot all about that. I think yeah, I did do that. You, you, yeah, you you are, you are a beast. I have my moments. I mean, I had my moments. Yeah. But, but the thing is, <laughs> and, and I brought that up because. You got a player of the year in 2011, mm -hmm. okay? You own 11 PWBA records. I do, yeah. That was craziness year. Now, I, that was just craziness. Out of all of that, yeah. which are you most proud of? Hmm. I, I, I don't know, you're gonna think this is an odd answer, I guess. Like, I don't really pinpoint one, 
because mm -hmm. I just, I always just wanted to win. Like, I just wanted to win. Oh, like, we know you I always win. looked at the trophy, not the paycheck. I was like, oh, that's a cool trophy. I'm probably most proud of the Queens because uh, when WIBC and ABC was still separate, mm -hmm. you knew the ultimate goal was to be in the WIBC Hall of Fame. Like if you were in the WIBC Hall of Fame, mm -hmm. wow, like that was a big thing. And to win the Queens, mm -hmm. you knew that you would have a, a, a bid to get in. Hands down. So, yeah. So, um, yeah, because if you had told me I was going to be in the PWBA Hall of Fame, I would have mm -hmm. told you you were nuts. So, I don't know. I Probably the Queens, because I think that really set the course. Well, that's, yeah. no, that's not a non but I, I love a specific all, answer. But I love all my wins. Oh, I, I understand I do, that. Because I liked to because win. Because that's going to set up this next question. Okay. Out of all of that. Yep. All that winning. Yep. Who on the tour pushed you the most? Ooh. Like you just had to win. Wow. Who did it? Yeah, there were there were a lot. I mean, there just were, God, there were just so many great bowlers. Mm -hmm. I, I think, I think because I watched them mm -hmm. and I tried to pay attention to what everybody's strong suit was or, or maybe what I thought wasn't or that you, you started to learn uh, what you needed to do at that moment to maybe mm -hmm. beat them. But I would say if I really had to pinpoint one, it would probably be Wendy McPherson because I, I finished runner-up for Player of the Year four times. Ooh, that's a good one. Prior to me winning Player of the Year. Mm -hmm. So I think that finishing second, finishing second, finishing second on good years, mm -hmm. And it still wasn't enough. Probably pushed me to just, just be something that I just never had, I never imagined I could be. But see, that's, that's funny because, mm -hmm. of all those wins, mm -hmm. six wins, in that year. Mm -hmm. Yet, your highest scoring average mm -hmm. was a solo and came after that, two thirty two. Right. Yeah. I don't. But what happened? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I they, just, yeah. I don't know. And that came after all of the wins. I know. I don't know. Just, I don't know. Things click, you know? I mean, it's just like they say, uh, you know, where you're kind of on a roll. Mm -hmm. Things just kind of keep going and you try to take advantage of it because you never know when it's going to end. You know, it's athletics. Right. Um, and not to be negative, mm -hmm. uh, but... God has been very good to me. I had I never had an injury. You okay. know, a little tendonitis okay. here and there. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like nothing serious. God has been extremely good to me. Mm -hmm. um, I never had a withdrawal from a tournament. I, you know, so I I was fortunate enough to, um, you know, keep myself in shape, mm -hmm. and and be able to take advantage of some very good years and just very fortunate. That that one that one year right there that definitely told a story. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well. But the thing is, it it didn't come out, you know, to a win in the end. But the thing but, is, you actually set a bar for yourself. Yeah, that's probably a good way of putting. it. That's a right. great way of putting it, actually. I just yeah. I mean, I, I I think I've always been someone who has put the bar higher and higher for myself, mm -hmm. which I think at times, it's made me also understand. Um, how handling other people like mm -hmm. I, I can't I always when I coach now I always want everybody to be the best they can be and I, I push a little bit and I remember uh, someone saying to me one day um, you're so you're you're passionate about it you can tell you're you just expect everybody to kind of buy in and they said you know the bar for people are at different heights mm -hmm. just because yours is the highest doesn't mean everyone else is going to be there because to them averaging 180 from 160 is their bar right right but i'm here to tell them they can average 185. does that make sense it, like i it makes perfect I just, sense i go more you know what i mean and sometimes especially with coaching you have to take a little bit of a back seat and go you know what mm -hmm. i need to know that you are happy right. and you're, you love doing what you're doing and you're having fun and you've met some expectations. And when you're ready for the next group, I'm here for you. 
And I think sometimes I probably I've gotten in my own way, especially as I got older. I set expectations too high with not being more realistic. And I think that kind of held me back a little bit and I had to refocus. Well, as a coach, you were just yeah. living vicariously I think through so. your students. I think so. Sometimes, yeah. You know, and, yeah. and speaking of which, you know, yeah. with that you know, cerebral assassin type oh, attitude. God. Oh, Lord. Cerebral. Okay, I like that's that. That's right. kind of cute. The king of the lanes yes. royal edition yes you bowled with your daughter Alyssa. i did i did with dell in the background yes yes she was stellar she was it, stellar on that show you know yes. what i noticed what you still have that killer instinct and she was trying to talk you off the ledge. I know. She does not have that. She is the quiet assassin like mm -hmm. her father. She she thinks me hooping it and running it out. She said, Mom, calm down. Like, oh, God, Mom. Like, she's totally not that. She has way more Dell's personality. Mm -hmm. um, but I remember practicing for that event. Mm -hmm. And all I kept telling myself was, please don't screw this up for her. Please don't screw this up for her. Don't. <laughs> because you lose for yourself. That's right. a different story. But, you know, when you're bowling doubles, it's But you held a tough each one. other up. We did, but she was, she was, she, and, she and Del definitely And got a little emotional, up. too. He did. He did. I think it's, it, he just gets emotional watching her bowl, no matter what she's doing. Mm -hmm. um, and, and he still enjoys watching me bowl. Don't get me wrong. But I think it's kind of seeing your next generation right. or the passion um, kind, kind of being passed on mm -hmm. that kind of gets you. So it was, it was yeah. pretty, uh, that's something I'll never forget. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad I had the opportunity to do that, you know, bowl with her on TV uh, because those opportunities don't come along all the time. And you went through the bones and the barns. Yes, yes. So take did that, it, boys. Did, did it take you back to high school? <laughs> it did, did a little bit. Did you put it on them just for no. that? Well, you know, and it's it's funny. Uh, Alyssa is friends with Ryan and mm -hmm. Brandon, which mm -hmm. is kind of cool. And then I'm good friends with Parker and Chris. Right. And honestly, and I'm saying this sincerely, um, neither team likes to lose. I mean, oh, barns and me, I mean, come that. on, right? That's but, fact. But I have to tell you, they were so genuinely happy mm -hmm. for Alyssa and for myself, and mostly for Alyssa. Um, you couldn't ask for two better teams to bowl against. Mm -hmm. They truly, truly were just great champions. You mm -hmm. can see why. Mm -hmm. And their kids were just as, as, as wonderful as their parents. So it was a great experience all the way around. But the biggest thing is you and Alyssa won late. We did. That means you don't have to ever, have some inner strength. Don't ever count us out, right? Uh, no, no, no. That's right. It's no, never over till the 10th no, frame. No, can't, yep. can't count you yep. out. Yep. So now, as we were talking earlier off mm -hmm. camera, mm -hmm. uh -oh. the UBA is coming to your home. I We've been reading that. That's we're reading right. all the bowling we're centers. We're coming down there. Yes, we're putting we are. our feet up in yeah, Texas. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. One of them is actually where your pro shop is located well it, it it didn't have declined or approved yet i don't know accepted oh, it's, it's coming okay city view lanes is on mm -hmm. the list mm -hmm. so um i'll be home this week and maybe i will have a chat with the owner josh and see what the story is there mm -hmm. but it's great to see you're coming to colleen and uh, North Austin there, mm -hmm. and then San Antonio area, so uh, Houston. Mm -hmm. So it's already making its way, so we gotta make it up to Dallas-Fort Worth. That's right. Yep. Now, as you've been around the UBA, you've seen mm -hmm. what's going on, mm -hmm. what do you think? Is it, now, now, I'm gonna, I know. I'm gonna come with part two of that question. Yeah. yeah. Are we going to see Alyssa in a UBA jersey I, alongside her mom <laughs> and maybe well, her right dad now, as well? Well, right now she bowls for an NCAA school, no, no, so we got to wait till she graduates. That's right. After that, she, I hope she continues with all team bowling. Um, right. It would be very interesting. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of trash talking going on out there, mm -hmm. a lot of excitement. Love the music. You got to play music okay. while you bowl. Okay. I okay. love that. Mm -hmm. So hopefully they'll have the music going tonight oh, while it, we're bowling, be going. right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's definitely something uh, that's going to continue to grow. I think I, I'm looking forward to seeing how it takes mm -hmm. off in Texas, which I think it'll be great because mm -hmm. I truly believe team bowling is the way to go. I love team bowling. I always have. I love the team challenges. There we go. You know, way back when. Mm -hmm. So it's just kind of another way of bringing it in. Not only that, 
men and women out there. And they're on a team together. together. Yes. I love it. Yes. So I, I think that it's definitely something that um, is going to bring a new, unique environment to the state of Texas. Mm -hmm. And I look forward to uh, seeing where it goes. <laughs> With the Hall of Famer, Carolyn Doran Ballard. And once Alyssa graduates, we can have her <laughs> in the UVA as well. There you go. You get, hey, matter of fact, <laughs> We, matter of fact, we're going to have the whole Ballard family in the UBA. Okay, how about that? Can you Don't be not bold, but he'll wear a jersey. He'll, he'll, be, he'll be a franchise coach. There you go. There you go. That's what there I'm you saying. Go. That's right. Carolyn Doran Ballard. Thank CDB. you. CDB. Put some respect on her name. You know what time it is. <laughs> Thank you for coming out. Oh, I loved it. Thank you.